Hello everyone! A new expansion means a new leveling guide. And by new, I mean I definitely didn't copy-paste the one I did last year. This time, we are making our way to 1560. So how do we get there? First, let's explain leveling caps. Note that for the purposes of this video, I'm not really going to be talking about artifact levels because artifact levels do not affect the power level of gear drops. I'm going to be a little more thorough than usual as well since I have a feeling we are going to have some more new players than usual or returning players. Okay, so any drops that you get before you hit 1500, which is the soft cap, will increase your power. Once you hit 1500, you will need to start doing powerful or pinnacle reward sites in order to increase your power with our next goal being 1550, the powerful cap. Finally, going from 1550 to 1560 requires you to complete pinnacle reward sites. You, you're fresh at 1350. So how do you level? Well, the best way to start leveling is to do the legendary campaign. The main reason is because once you complete the legend campaign, you will be given 1520 gear in all slots, which you can use to infuse into your current gear or just use as your gear. The soft cap is 1500, meaning you get to skip 20 levels of power grinding, which is very significant and can give you a huge head start into that part of the grind. That being said, the legendary version of the campaign will not be for everybody. I would highly encourage all players to try, but if you can't do it, or it's gonna take too much time to really make it worth the effort, don't worry about it too much. The campaign should get you pretty close to 1500 otherwise. If you do manage to complete the campaign before hitting 1500, do anything you want until you hit 1500. I believe the game will not even allow you to see powerful reward sites until you hit 1500, which is good because doing them before 1500 would be a waste. So what about second and third characters? Should you run them through the legendary campaign? My answer is yes. If you have the capabilities to run them through the legendary campaign without too much extra effort, then I think you should. This is because of the double drops that you get during the legend campaign compared to the single drops that you get from the normal campaign despite the fact that these drops are not powerful drops. However, if you struggled with the Legendary Campaign, or you're just kind of over it, then there is nothing wrong with running the normal campaign on alternate characters. Once you start to notice a significant slowing down of upgrades while doing the campaign, Legend or otherwise, you can feel free to stop doing it in order to swap to doing Powerfuls and Pinnacles. So, Let's say you just hit 1500. This is where you hit a wall and things are really going to slow down. What's the best way to level? The best way to level, and really the only way to level, is by doing powerful and pinnacle reward sites and activities. Anything with this star icon is a powerful or pinnacle reward source. Just hover over the activity to see which one it is. Powerful rewards can be tier 1, 2, or 3. The higher the tier, the bigger the potential upgrade. Powerful reward sites include the following. Doing eight bounties for Zavala, Shax, the Drifter, and Banshee, aka Vanguard Ops, Crucible, Gambit, and the Gunsmith. Completing Nightfall Strikes will give you a powerful tier one drop. Doing this on Legend means you only need to do one Nightfall in order to get this reward. If you do it on a difficulty that's easier, you're going to need to do multiple. The Throne World has multiple reward sites, including getting Reputation with Finch on a weekly basis, doing the Altars of Reflection weekly node, and doing the weekly Wellspring node. At rank 13 with Finch, you will unlock the weekly campaign mission. Doing this once will get you a powerful. For Season 16 specifically, PsyOps Battlegrounds in the Helm will give you a powerful after opening two, four, and then six runic chests at the end. Dares of Eternity will give you a powerful reward after three runs. Hawthorne will give you a Tier 2 Powerful upon completion of enough Clan XP. Grasp of Avarice, for you 30th Anniversary owners, says it rewards a Pinnacle, but that's only for the final boss. The first two encounters will give Powerfuls. The Vault of Glass Raid offers Tier 3 Powerful rewards after each encounter. This is one of the best places to level while you're getting to 1550. 
Prime Engrams will be dropping while you're out and about killing things. These are powerful level rewards, not pinnacle, but they should be pretty hefty chunks of level, about tier two upgrades. You should try to decode these immediately or as soon as possible after getting them. You'll start to see these more frequently after you hit 1500. The competitive playlist also offers up powerful level rewards whenever you rank up. Competitive PvP is actually one of the best places to level up quickly, but you need to be able to keep winning constantly, like every game, to keep increasing your rank rapidly. This is definitely not an option for everyone. Pinnacle reward sites include the following. The Vanguard Ops playlist, the Gambit and Freelance Gambit playlist, and the Crucible playlist. Basically, any of these nodes play in the respective playlist three times to get a pinnacle. Getting 100,000 points in the Nightfall, which usually requires a run of the Legend version, will get you a pinnacle. Note that Legend and higher difficulties do not have matchmaking for Nightfall and for most, if not all, other activities in the game. Getting 250,000 points in Dares of Eternity will get you a pinnacle. This needs a Legend run in order to achieve the score. Again, this is not match made at Legend. The Witch Queen Raid, whatever it is, will give pinnacle rewards after each encounter. The Weekly Campaign Mission will give you a pinnacle if you get 100,000 points while doing it, likely requiring a Legend or higher difficulty run. At rank 18 with Finch, you unlock Master Mode for the Wellspring. Completing this will give you a pinnacle. Killing 10 champions in the Season 16 PsyOps Battlegrounds will get you a pinnacle. Note that any pinnacles rewarded from Season 16 content will likely be discontinued when the next season starts, with whatever the current season is basically always having the pinnacle rewards. Finally, the exotic mission Vox Obscura, which is unlocked with Season 16 quest progression, will also give pinnacle rewards after killing enough powerful Cabal and Champions. The first time you do this mission, you'll be given an exotic grenade launcher in the energy slot, which will be plus 5. So, what's the strategy here? The plan is to get one character as high level as possible by doing all of their powerfuls and pinnacles, and then transferring your weapons to your alternate character, if you have one, doing all of their Powerfuls and Pinnacles, and then doing it again for your third character, again, if you have one. Then, when Reset rolls around, you do it all again, doing all of your Powerfuls and all of your Pinnacles on every single character. If you're grinding for the Day 1 Raid, it's a better idea to start with your main character, then do alternate character 1, then alternate character 2, and then the following week, start with alternate character 2, then alternate 1, and then your main. What do the different tiers of powerful rewards mean? A tier 1 powerful will give a plus 3 item. A tier 2 is plus 4, and a tier 3 is plus 5. Here's an example of what I mean. In this clip, I am 1533 overall. That is the average of my highest possible gear. I go to turn in a tier 1 powerful objective. I am then rewarded with a 1536 kinetic weapon, which is plus three over my current overall level. Note that in this clip, it says my level is 1532, not 1533. This is because the game uses the highest level items in your entire inventory. You do not need to have it all equipped on you while picking up rewards. A pinnacle gives a plus five upgrade like a tier three. However, Unlike a powerful tier 3, a pinnacle can push you over the 1550 cap, whereas a powerful reward after 1550 is not effective. Remember, pinnacles are the only thing that will get you from 1550 to 1560. Note that if you're grinding for the day one raid, my guess is that you're gonna need to be somewhere in the 1530 to 1540 range, which will be very easily achieved if you do the legendary campaign and do some grinding on a couple of characters. Bungie is looking to keep the day one raid experience very accessible. It wouldn't surprise me if it was even less than 1530. As for advice on when to run a pinnacle reward versus a powerful reward, you should run a pinnacle when you don't have a lot of variance in item levels across your gear. For example, let's say you're 1520 overall, and most of your gear is 1519, 1520, and 1521. Doing a pinnacle will get you a plus five upgrade, which means you're guaranteed at least a four power upgrade in any given slot, as high as plus six, which is really good. Like, that's pretty good. But 
if you're 1520 with a lot of variants in your gear, let's say you have a helm that's, you know, 1516 and a gun that's 1524 and you got some 1518s and some 1522s or something like that, a lot of variants, wide variants, you might want to opt for opening one or even multiple tier one powerfuls to try to boost the lower level items up. You may also want to opt for something that I'm about to talk about. The issue here, and what has been the issue for a very long time, is RNG. Sometimes you just don't get the armor pieces you need or the weapons you need, and that can really slow your grind down. There is unfortunately not a lot you can do about this, so you just kinda gotta roll with it. If this all sounds very familiar, it's because it's exactly how it's worked for literally years now. It's the same thing. There is also an advanced technique to leveling called blueing up, for lack of a better term. When you hit the soft cap of 1500, blues and other at level drops will stop providing power for you and will instead drop at minus three to plus zero power compared to your current highest possible power. However, this means that you could potentially come across blue items that are higher level than some of your current highest gear. In this example, my power is 1526. I know it says 1525, but I missed some gloves that were higher. I saved some powerversal hauls from last season to use as a blue drop or an on-level item drop. Because the spread of my power levels across my gear is so wide, as low as 1523 and as high as 1530, Anything that's below my highest overall power level, which is 1526, is able to be upgraded via a blue or on level drop. And in this example, I happen to pull some boots that happen to be plus zero when they dropped, which means my boots go from 1523 to 1526 for free, which is the equivalent of a tier one powerful. The boots in this case could have been just a random lucky blue that I found on the ground. Now, while this technique can get you a lot of extra levels for free, it comes at the cost of a lot of extra time spent grinding for those drops. And those without that much time to grind probably will not utilize this method of grinding. This method will likely only be used by pretty hardcore players. And if you didn't really follow along with what I was saying, Honestly, you don't really need to worry about it too much. Even if you're grinding for the day one raid race, as long as you're doing all of your powerfuls and pinnacles, you're probably not going to need to resort to something like this. When it comes to artifact levels, which are also important, but independent of gear level, experience is everything. And the best source of experience are the weekly seasonal challenges followed by bounties. That has not changed at all. That is basically everything you need to know about leveling. In short, do your powerfuls and pinnacles on all characters every week as much as you can. Every single thing that you can do, try to do it. Ultimately, most people are not going to have the time to fully optimize which things they get to run and when, so go for volume. It's better to run a bunch of stuff and get maybe not as good upgrades than it is to try to plan to do activities in the most optimal order and then never get around to actually doing them. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.